Casey Neistat is back to doing daily vlogs, but more importantly, he's shooting on Sony Alpha cameras. Now, as a Sony Alpha shooter myself and a gearhead with some severe case of gas, I figured it'd be fun to do a little breakdown on what other people are shooting. So in this video, not only are we gonna go over Casey's new setup, but how much does it all cost, how well it works, and if it improved his video quality or not. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and start off with his run and gun setup and this can be clearly seen in his minor studio accident video. He's currently rocking the Sony Alpha 6500 primarily because it's a tiny mirrorless camera that can shoot in 4K. Not only that, but it has built-in stabilization which helps smooth out his handheld footages whenever he vlogs. And the lens that is attached to the 6500, you know, the one he marketed on, is actually a popular choice for vlogging. It's the Sony 10 to 18 millimeter, a super nice compact wide angle lens, which has a constant aperture of f4. It also has built-in stabilization or what Sony calls it, optical steady shot. Now the next few things are from his older setup, the uh, Shure VP83 shotgun mic and the Joby Gorilla Pod. Now let's go over how much each of these equipment costs. The Sony Alpha 6500 is $1,398. By the way, I'm pulling these prices off of Amazon. So depending when you watch this or where you watch this, it might be a little bit different, but these are the prices as of now in the United States. Let's continue. The Sony 10 to 18 F4 is $848. The Sure Shotgun Mic is $199. And the Joby Gorilla Pot with the Ball Head X is $149.99. So the total for this run and gun setup is $2,594.99. This is excluding memory cards and the extra batteries he could have gotten and a tax, because I'm guessing Casey buys all of this in person. So just for funsies, let's go ahead and take a look at his previous run and gun setup. I know he was kind of in between the 70D and the 80D, but just for the sake of using the latest and greatest, the Canon 80D is $1,099. Now he listed two wide angle lenses in his description, but again, we'll take the more expensive one, the 10 to 22 f3.5 to 4.5. $599. Same mic, same Gorilla Pot. The total for this setup is $2,046.99. Just to give you the price difference between these two setups right here, it's $548. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to his studio setup as clearly seen in his YouTube loyalty video and MKBHD's Casey Neistat Studio Tour video. Now, the camera he's using in his studio is the Sony A7R2, which is $2,898. This alone costs more than the run and gun setup. Before we freak out, we gotta talk about the lens that's attached to the Sony A7R2. It is the 24 to 70 f2.8 G Master lens. That comes in at about $2,198. The G Master series is Sony's top of the line lenses, hence the hefty price tag. Housing all of this is the Tilta Cage, which is $399, the same Shure microphone, $199, and we have here the small HD701. Now, I'm assuming it's the small HD701 because it looks like a 7-inch screen, and I'm assuming he got the HDMI-only version. It costs $689.98. Now, the reason why he has this external monitor is because in one of his videos, he mentioned that the Sonys don't have a flip-out screen like the Canons do, so he needs this external external monitor to frame himself while he vlogs. So let's go ahead and talk about his tripod that he's using. Uh, just the Manfrotto 502 fluid head right here is $167.99. Mind you, this is just the fluid head. We haven't talked about the legs yet. The legs are carbon fiber. It's the uh, MT-055, it doesn't matter what the model number is. It's a carbon fiber tripod. I think this is the exact one that he's using. It's $324.45. And the light that he's using, it's the Manfrotto Lycos Bicolor Light, or I don't, I don't know how you pronounce that, L-I-K-O-S. It's $499.88. Now, excluding the HDMI cable, the friction arm, the micro ball head, the little stuff that he uses to mount all this stuff to his cage, and the SD card, the batteries, and the tags, of course, 
the studio setup is $7,376.21. Now, combine that with the run and gun setup, the grand total is $9,971.20. Now, we're still pretty far off from that $17,000 price. But don't forget, Casey likes to fly drones in his video, so his drone of choice is the DJI Mavic Pro, which is $999. But you know, it's Casey, he probably bought the extra batteries and stuff, so let's assume he got the Mavic Pro bundle, which is $1,299. And in one of his videos, he mentioned he likes having a sidearm camera, a simple point and shoot, so assuming he's keeping within the Sony ecosystem, it's probably the Sony RX105. That costs $998, which brings the grand grand total to $12,268.20. Now we're still short of $5,000, but don't forget guys, in his first Sony video, he has the A7S II and the 16 to 35, and we'll go over in a bit why the A7S II is different and why he hasn't been using it. In some of his other videos, we also started seeing the 24 to 240 millimeter lens. So these three items right here is a total of $5,044, making the grand, grand, grand total of $17,312.20. Again, excluding memory cards, batteries, cables, mounts, the Samsung phone that he uses to vlog from time to time, the GoPro obviously, and of course, tax. So how well does this all work? Well, it actually works really darn well. The Sony has some of the best autofocusing capabilities, especially in their A7R2 and the A6500. Unfortunately, not the A7S2 because it uses a different focusing system, which is why he probably is not using it a lot in his vlogs. But that camera is an amazing low light piece of a camera. I'm sure if he needs to shoot anything at night, that would be the camera he turns to. There is a feature on the Sony camera called face detection, which when turned on, will always focus on his face. So does his new setup massively improve his quality of his video overall? Subjectively, yeah, I think so. His videos look way more vibrant now. The background blur, aka bokeh in his video looks clean, and his vlogs are now in 4K. Compared to what he was using before, no bash on Canon or anything, they make great, great cameras. The ADD was much bulkier, and I hate to say it, it does not shoot in 4K. If you pull up his older vlogs and his newer vlogs, compare them side by side, you will see the difference. So that was subjective thinking. Objectively, no, I don't think it improved the way that he tells his story. Casey Neistat has always been a great storyteller and he preaches this himself, gear doesn't matter. He proved it by capturing all of our hearts shooting on something as simple as a point and shoot camera. And just to reference an older video of his, in Casey's Casey Neistat's Guide to Filmmaking, he talked about the cameras he's used over the years and used the law of diminishing return to illustrate his point. As you spend more, you get less and less for your return. So guess what? We would still be watching his vlogs regardless if he was shooting on a million dollar setup or on a dollar potato point and shoot camera. Thanks for watching guys. If you guys are a new face to this channel, I do a ton of video on Sony Alpha cameras, including reviews, tips and tricks, and maybe more breakdown videos like this one. So subscribe to stay tuned. If you're interested, I did an in-depth review on the Sony Alpha 6500 and the Sony A7R2. So click here to check it out. Hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace. I bumped my light.